Good afternoon, young persons. Welcome back to the High School Woodshop. We're making a series of videos where we're talking about the machines, the materials, and the techniques that we use in a high school woodshop. In this segment, we're going to look at the miter saw. What we have here is a 12 inch powered sliding compound miter saw. It's made by DeWalt, pretty much industry standard. You'll see one of these in the back of every uh, contractor's pickup truck going down the freeway towards uh, San Jose every day. Works fine, lasts a long time. Won't rust, bust, or collect dust. This is a great machine. Very reliable, very precise. First thing we're gonna talk about is the different parts and pieces on this machine. Uh, number one is, is the trigger. The trigger is up here on the handle. It has a trigger guard, and if you squeeze it, it comes on, assuming it's plugged in. Um, on the front here, we have a blade guard. The blade itself, of course, is here inside the blade guard. Um, on the uh, here, we have a fence. This is the fence. This is the table. This part of the table actually rotates. On the back of the machine, you can see that we have a motor, and on the very back over here on the other side, there is a lock so that it won't slide. So it slides, I tighten the lock, and now it doesn't slide. Red dial indicator, and I push this front here, which will lock it in place so that it doesn't move. So, what we have there then, this is a miter scale with uh, numbers on it from 0 to 50 on this side and uh, 0 to 60 on this side. And on the back of the machine, as you can see, there is a handle back here that allows this machine to uh, do the compound miter. So I'm going to loosen the handle and I rotate it over. And so now you can see that not only are we at an angle this way, but we can tilt the blade at an angle this way, like that. Also, I will point out there is a dust chute on the back of the machine back here that you can connect a vacuum cleaner to to collect the dust off. Okay, if we're going to be using this machine, then we're going to go through this six-step process. It only might take a few seconds but we're gonna be mindful of certain things. Number one, the first thing is, is are we prepared to use the machine? So again, if you're tired, or if you're sick, or if you're under the influence, even if it's an over-the-counter drug like NyQuil, then we won't be using this machine today. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your safety glasses on when you use this machine. It's possible that you might need to wear hearing protection also. In this shop, we generally don't use hearing protection because we only use the machine for a couple of cuts and we're done. But if for some reason you're making cuts all period long, we'll probably put some hearing protection on. Again, we're just going to want to make sure that the saw itself is clean and swept off, the floor is clean, and that the machine is ready to be used. On this machine here, the blade guard must be taken apart in order to change the blade. So if you walk up to the machine, and the blade guard is not working, then you cannot use the machine. And the reason why the blade guard might not be working is because I changed the blade and didn't finish putting it back together for whatever reason. The blade guard must be working on this machine to use it. Okay, if we're going to be cutting a board on here that is uh, long, then you're going to want to use the outfeed um, horns and set them at the appropriate length so that your work is supported. The correct way to use a machine in this shop is that when you are making a cut on a board, the piece that you'll be keeping is always placed on the left side of the machine. The off cut will be on the right side of the machine. You're gonna stand on the left side of the machine. What I don't want you to do is to do something that requires your arms to cross when you're using the machine like this. It's just not gonna be allowed. Normally you stand on the left side of the blade with your hand up here, so once again that your chest is not aligned with the blade. I'm not going to make the cut like this. 
I'm going to stand off to the left side. I'm in a hunter. You may need to put the piece you're keeping on the right side of the blade. And you would stand on the right side of the blade like this. So now you're going to have your hand holding the material, your right hand, and it will be your left hand operating the saw. You're not going to cross your arms like this so that it's always your right hand on the trigger. The machines in this shop have had an orange zone painted on them where I don't want to see your fingers. If you're going to be cutting something on this machine that will require your fingers to be placed inside the orange zone, then like for example, something small, then we're probably going to use set up some kind of a clamp system to, uh, or the clamp that comes with the machine so that your fingers are not inside the orange zone when we squeeze the trigger. If we're going to be making repeated short cuts on the machine, we can use a, a stop block such as this so that we can make the same cut over and over and get an exact length. The third step that we're going to take in preparing to use this machine is to check the material. Much like the table saw, your material being cut on this machine must have two adjoining sides that are flat, straight, and true. So that when you set it on the table, it doesn't rock, and when you place it back against the fence, there's no gap. Step number four, using the machine correctly, you're going to want to stand off to the left side of the machine. Stand comfortable with good balance. No awkward operations. You're going to want to ensure that you hold the material down firmly on the table and back against the fence with your hand. Firmly down on the table, firmly back against the fence. Do not put your fingers inside the trigger guard until you're ready for the saw blade to come on. So I have a board that I want to cut, and I want to have it cut at a certain distance. And uh, this cut right now is going to be at exactly 17 and 1 8 inches. I set my material up there. I have my hand on top, but they are not inside the trigger guard. I slide the material back and forth right where I want it. Once I have the board in the correct place lined up on my mark, I'm going to raise the, the saw up off the material, put my fingers inside the trigger guard, turn it on, and make the cut. If I'm going to be making a cut on a board that's a little bit wider, then what we're going to do is pull the, pull the blade towards you, go down, and then make the cut complete. Do not start here and then cut pulling the blade towards you like this. Notice I wait until the blade comes to a complete stop before I raise the saw back up. Do not allow small chips to build up around the saw where you're cutting. I have seen those go flying across the room when the saw catches it just right. Okay, step number five. We're going to deal with the unexpected. On this machine here, much like the table saw, you can get yourself in trouble and you need to be paying attention. It's a very safe machine to use. If you follow my directions and you do as I've asked you to do, you're not going to have any trouble. But there are some unexpected things that could happen. While you're using the machine, one of your so-called friends may come up behind you and tap you on the shoulder to ask you something or say something. This person is not your friend and they're hoping you're going to cut your fingers off. If you get a distraction, if someone tries to talk to you, if something hits you in the back of the head, you need to ignore everything else and complete your cut to a safe conclusion before you deal with whatever that distraction is. Something that might be unexpected is, as you're using the machine, the saw blade, or the sound of the saw may change, and the saw blade begins to slow down. So you need to just slow your rate of feed so that you're not cutting so fast and let the machine catch up to the work that you're trying to make it to do. Finally, please, step number six, use common sense. You're using the machine. Something doesn't seem right, 
something doesn't feel right, something doesn't sound right, if there's something wrong, don't just keep moving forward. Stop what you're doing, turn the machine off, try and figure out what's going on. Come and talk to me, we'll put our heads together and figure out what needs to be done so that we can do what we need to do safely and efficiently. What are your questions? I hope we get doing something one of these days.